Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Steven and today I'm going to be talking about The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. This book has literally changed my whole perspective on the fantasy genre and has become one of my favorite fantasy books of all time. Today I'm going to share some of the reasons about why that is and how that has come to be and also I'm going to kind of give you a stylized synopsis of the book what it's about and kind of the things that you can expect when you pick it up yourself and read it. Um, just to preface this video, just like my other previous videos in this channel, I do not plan on spoiling this book for you. So if you do plan on picking it up for yourself, please do not fret. You can watch this video and know that this is basically just a stylized version of the back of this book. Um, and just with a little extra added detail and also with some of the pros and cons of the book, just in case if it's a book that maybe doesn't necessarily fall into your liking, um, you can avoid it then at that point. I'm going to start right away. This book is amazing. I, I, I want to start this by saying I never was a fan of fantasy. I never really was a huge you know, Harry Potter guy. Um, I didn't read Game of Thrones. I like Lord of the Rings. I like The Hobbit. Um, but that's really where my fantasy intake kind of stopped. Um, of course, in video games and stuff like that, I did have more exposure to fantasy and those themes, but they just never really stuck to me. I never felt the characters too convincing, the stories too exciting, and they all kind of feel the same in some ways, shape or form. Uh, and it just, yeah, for those reasons, I just never really gravitated toward fantasy. Now with this book, this book does something a little bit different, something that I wasn't really expecting upon picking this up. I heard that this was sort of uh, magic, so I was sort of expecting something like Harry Potter almost, uh, set in the Victorian era. This is something completely different than that, even though that those things are true. Morgan Stern has created a world here that was actually convincing. It was so convincing, in fact, that even while reading the book, I caught myself wanting to look this stuff up on Wikipedia just to be sure that it was true. And that may sound strange because most fantasy books, when we read them, we recognize this is totally fiction. This is something that could never happen or has never happened or never will happen. However, Morgan Stern here has done something interesting. Rather than taking that traditional, oh, everything in this is fictitious and accepting that just from the, from the start and the get-go, she has blended genres here a little bit, which I love. She was throwing in bits of history, bits of, you know, uh, knowledge about science and things like this that really made the world and the setting and even the characters who exist within it feel so real. It almost felt like I was reading a journal or someone's biography in a way, even though there were many characters that would sometimes take the wheel and kind of guide the story and where we were going with it. Now, this book, she's thick, <laughs> she's thick. Uh, but I just couldn't put it down. I finished this book in probably like a week and I just, I, I just couldn't stop reading it. There was just something so captivating about the way that the, the characters and the setting kind of all fit together so perfectly. And I'm sure that had a, plenty to do with Morgan Stern's own research of the timeline. This book is happening right around the turn of the 20th century. Science and our advancements in industry are really taking off around the world and, and people really are starting to see the benefits of modern medicine and things like this that in the previous century right before that in the 1800s people were still you know very much dying in their 30s and things like that were normal um, and you know we didn't really have telephones and TVs and even like radios and telecommunications was just in its infancy at this point however at the turn of the century these new technologies I guess people's view of what was possible in the world and what wasn't was changing. And I think this is a theme here that I want to sit with for a little bit in this video. Morgan Stern likes to play with reality. A lot of this book, as I said before, is very historically driven. There's a lot of parts in it where you feel like it's kind of a history book. She's talking a lot about the setting and the characters and their clothes and what they were eating and what they were doing and how they were doing it. And, kind of taking us in and taking us by the hand and showing us what this world's all about, this 1900s America and parts of Europe. But then too, those elements of fantasy come in and later on they bleed together. It becomes so closely enmeshed that it's really hard to distinguish what's real and what's not. And I think 
that is a huge part of this book is playing with reality. What is real and what isn't? What is magical and what's just ordinary? These questions always were constantly rolling around in my head while reading this book. It's something that rarely happens where I'm constantly asking questions of what's going on sometimes, but it was not because it was confusing. It was because I just couldn't tell if it was something rooted in our kind of sense of reality or in something a little bit outside of that. So what is this book all about? To start, there's two characters and there's an event. The two characters, the main ones, Marco and Celia are children in the beginning of this book. They're taken in by grand magicians of sorts and they're trained. They're taken out of school, they're taken away from their homes and they're trained for a competition. One that neither of them signed up for, one that neither of them was expecting, but they are. These two grandmasters train them in their own ways and fashions that are much different from one another, very contrasting. And they grow up under their wing to become illusionists, magicians, and other sorts of magical uh, elements are embedded into them that help them create really reality-bending events that I can't really get into. And then in the background of all this training in this inevitable competition that neither of them know how to win or who they're facing even, there's this group of individuals who, just as I was saying before, at the turn of the century, were inspired by this new enlightenment, if you, if you will. Millionaires, architects, clockmakers, acrobats, illusionists, contortionists, all these people who you wouldn't never really imagine beating one another in a room anywhere in the world, coming together because they want to create something new for this new century that is upon them. Something that is unlike anything that anyone has ever seen. They call it the Cirque de Rêve, the Circus of Dreams in English. This circus, needless to say, is quite different than most circus that other people and even us in our present day have kind of ideas about. If you couldn't tell from the cover of this book, the circus is completely in black and white. Everything, the clothing, the tents themselves, but then also ordinary things that would be in color that you could never really expect to change also fall into that category. Fire and food, animals and clocks and mirrors, all bending differently to the light, sounds being distorted in ways that maybe ordinarily would be something that you would normally expect from say a dog or a cat or a bird, but come out a little different, twinged, a little strange. The circus also only shows up at night and it only opens at night and it closes as soon as the sun is rising. These individuals are trying to create an experience unlike anything ever seen before. Playing with light and using darkness and illusion to not only have those people who do come in to see this wonder of the world ask questions. They begin to ask questions about this reality that we were just talking about, the one that we're just in now. Many go in with expectations. Of course, it's a circus. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be interesting. Something unlike anything I've seen, right? Many of those promises already expected. But beyond that, so reality bending, in fact, that many people go into the circus and leave and are unsure as to whether what they saw was real or if their life outside of the circus has actually been the lie itself and that what's going on in there in those tents that may be reality itself and we was just hidden to us. As people are going into the circus, learning about its mysteries, as soon as people begin to get comfortable with it, it disappears. And then ma ma magically, it just like it came, it leaves and then appears elsewhere on the globe. However, it's changed and from one person's experience to the next, 
it's almost like a completely different place. However, it is very much the same. How couldn't it be? It's that big set of tents with the clocks and the striped tents that hang just in the random field and it seems as though it came from nowhere. It didn't make any sound, no one announced it, but it was there, much like a dream. Eventually, as the story progresses, this competition, these events, this circus, they'll have come together in a way that really do create what is, in my opinion, one of the best fantasy stories that I have, frankly, ever read, and one that has really set the bar a whole level higher for me and what I'm expecting from this genre. This book is not only, like, visually captivating, like, just with the cover and everything, it's just a beautiful book, but that really shines through in the in the wordplay and the way that Morgenstern writes this book. I just, it's so captivating. It's like you can't escape this because it's always got something new kind of being pulled out of those tents, out of the, under the rugs and new experiences that, you know, frankly seem reasonable, but also are just twinged with just enough mystique. It's like almost like something you, you can't put your finger on it. I can't explain it without spoiling too much, so I think I'm just gonna leave it there, but Needless to say that this book and its climax really do mesh so well together. And I think that's something that, again, fantasy in the past, for me at least, has really lacked is that, that just, oh, it just, I, I felt so invested in it because everyone just fit in exactly right and they all belonged. It wasn't like they were just some character that was whipped up and then just thrown into the middle of some normal fantasy world with dragons and stuff like no these people really lived there and were experiencing these things as if it was almost like a history re a historical retelling of events that really happened it's just a beautiful book it, it really is i mean i i hope you can tell from my enthusiasm about telling you all of this now that's not to say that this is a perfect book right there is no such thing in my opinion there are some issues with it morgan stern sometimes can be a little too detailed sometimes, where it just feels like there's pages and pages and pages of detail of what do the candlesticks look like? What did the cars and like the horse trolleys sound like? And what color were they painted? And what did the smells from the circus and other things smell like? And what were the people doing? And where were they going? And why were they doing it? Like there was just so much detail. It, and don't get me wrong, it really helped make this setting convincing. That was one of its strengths, but also too much of a good thing. Right? Like, kind of too much detail where it was getting a little dull at points. And also, the ending of the book came on slower than I was expecting. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to spoil it, but it, it just came on a little slow. I would have liked it to be a little more fast-paced at the end there. But I was happy with the ending, so we'll call that even. Do I recommend this book? Absolutely. This book is amazing. And if you're looking for something new in fantasy, and even with like a touch of like that history nonfiction almost, this is it. This is the one. Uh, I I can't recommend this book enough, frankly. Um, I loved it. For me personally, I, I love that detailed writing style. So I love this a lot. I thought it was a great book. Definitely something that I'll definitely be recommending just in my personal life. Um, and it's a good hat, you know, so I'm gonna pop that guy on there. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for visiting me and my channel, and I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope to see you in the next one. This is a good hat. Or is it? I'll see you in the next one.